Hello and welcome to Chip In, the programme which boldly goes where no programme has gone before and is ever likely to again. So without more ado, it's Chip In Challenge. Well, with me this week are the Finlaysons from Macclesfield and the Fowler family from Rochdale. Now, two volunteers have put their best feet and fingers forward, Matthew Finlayson and Lee Fowler. They have the awesome task of saving Liverpool from destruction by the alien liverbirds. I don't know what these aliens have against Liverpool. Perhaps they've heard about chipping. Anyway, it's fingers on joysticks and buttons, Matthew and Lee. I'm about to blow the whistle and set you off. 45 seconds from now. Now, here come those alien liverbirds. I think they're misunderstood. I don't think they want to destroy Liverpool. I think they want to sign on. Here they come, dropping something, either eggs or something unmentionable. Matthew's lost a life. Seems to be employing the scattergun technique, firing as randomly as possible. Meanwhile, Lee Fowler. Despite him being from Rochdale, he's showing a great deal of loyalty, prepared to lay down his life for Liverpool. Now we're running out of time, guys. Here comes the whistle. <whistles> Looking at the scores, I see that Lee Fowler is the winner. <clears throat> well, the result of our chip-in game has left one of our families hopping mad, which leads us to the next game, Frogger. Now, in Frogger, you have to guide frogs across a busy road then across a river and to the safety of the far bank. So, avoid the heavy traffic, use the logs and the turtles floating down the river and find a safe landing spot like this one. Now, the winner will be the one who gets the most frogs across in 30 seconds from now. Now, here's Pin Piers fin Finlayson making very good progress. He's on the back of the turtles, onto a log. Now, you mustn't drop in the water because these electronic frogs croak it for some reason in the water. Meanwhile, Andrew Fowler, he's got one safely across. He's avoiding the juggernauts and the speeding motor cars. Quickly across the turtles and onto a log. Waiting patiently for a log to come, using the turtles cleverly very again, and getting the second one across. Now, we're running out of time. Only a little more hopping time available. It's all up, and the winner is Andrew Fowler with two frogs. Enough of outdoor pursuits, and to show me the way to go home, I've got Jane Bird, who's the editor of Personal Computer World. In fact, Jane is going to lead me right up the garden path. How about this for a dream house? Just take a look inside with me. Good evening, Jane. Welcome home. Good evening, house. I trust everything's in order. Yes, I am a comfortable 19 degrees Celsius, and I have just started running your bath. Would you like to watch television, Jane, or listen to some music? A Beethoven string quartet, I think. Mmm, marvellous. What's for dinner? Now, we mustn't get carried away. This is an illusion, a dream house, and a very beautiful one for that matter, built by local craftsman Peter Fu. But first, let's get Jane back home. Good heavens! Now, Jane, I'm reliably informed that the computer can do none of the things we've just heard about. But what can it do? Can it help me with my accounts? Well, Mark, if you need a computer to help you with your accounts, I think what you really need is an accountant. But I've heard about home finance packages. Are they no good? Well, it took me a very long time to find one person who'd used a home computer for home budgeting. So if a computer can't help me balance um, my bank account, what can it do for me, if anything? Well, it's very good at, at cross-referencing information. So look around the home. Take the kitchen, for example. You've got lots of information in your cookery books. Um, say you want to plan a dinner party. You've got nine people coming. So you choose a menu, and the computer can work out exactly how many ingredients you need for your nine people. Well, that sounds handy for me, because I've just about mastered a tin of beans. Another thing I battle against are masses of pieces of paper with telephone numbers on them. Can a computer help me there? Yes. Once you tell the computer the telephone numbers and addresses of your friends, you won't need to do it again until they move. In fact, we've got one in the, in the chipping studio here. 
There we are. You can see on screen all the vital telephone numbers we need. So really what we have to remember is that a computer is a brilliant way of handling lots of information. That's right. It can, it can remember a lot. It can remind you, for example, when you need to send birthday cards to your friends or when you ought to be going to the dentist for a checkup. Well, in that case, then, I shall ring you up tomorrow and invite you to dinner. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Trouble is, I'd like the computer to do the gardening whilst I nip to the pub for a pint and a game of darts. Pity the computer can't help there. Or can it? The Burnley Ladies Darts League has a fearsome reputation for hitting the treble twenties. Every Tuesday night, about 60 pub teams are in full flight, locked in mortal combat. However, when the league formed 18 years ago, there were only 10 teams. So as the league grew, a problem appeared, sorting out the fixtures. Each team has to play the other teams twice, at home and away. Some pubs, like the Wellington, this is the Foresters, by the way, have two teams which can't play at home at the same time. Gradually, the whole business of sorting out the fixtures turned into a nightmare. How could the problem be solved? Could the sanity of the league secretary be preserved? Now, Pam, we've heard about the problem that you were up against. How did you solve it? Well, we solved the problem with this... A computer. Surprise, surprise. Now, that's the kind of thing that comes out on the readout. How does that help you compared to the past? Well, I used to start off with, say, for example, A Division, and I used to get the list of the teams, and then I used to have to number them all, and then each number uh, would play against another number. And invariably, I used to get two teams playing at the same place, so I had to start all over again. And I ended up with so many sheets on the floor that I often had to scrap the whole lot and start afresh. So how long does it take you now to work out the fixtures for the league? One division, uh, I can have a fixture made out in four minutes. And have any other leagues followed your example? Yes, actually, one of the Burnley Summer Leagues has approached us, and in fact, we did their league fixtures for them this year. Clive, you wrote the programme, which is making Pam's life so much more easy. How did you come to meet her? Well, I'm the secretary of Burnley Computer Club and through a, a member um, who explained um, Pam's particular problem. What did you have to take into account when you wrote it? Well, every team would like to play every week and preferably at home one week and away the next. And then every team has to play every other team twice. And those three things uh, made the programme quite complex. But what does the computer do that Pam can't? Well, basically, the computer does it the same way as Pam, very simply, but it, it does it very fast. And if Pam wanted to compete with a computer, she'd need 50 people with pencils and paper. Here's to the computer. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, I wonder how the men's league are going on. And now let's see whether you at home can hit the bullseye by writing as a computer programme which is either educational or a game for a preschool child, like this one. Remember, cassettes or floppy disks only, please. No listings on paper. And there are prizes of up to £150 worth of computer gear to be won. Now, if you'd like to enter, write to us, enclosing a stamped addressed envelope, that's important, and we'll send you a copy of the rules and an entry form. The address is Chip in Competition, Granada Television, Derby House, Liverpool L2 3UZ. I'll repeat that. Chip in Competition, Granada Television, Derby House, Liverpool L2, 3UZ. And now a battle in space and a battle of the sexes, because Jane Finlayson and Roy Fowler are going to repel the alien ambush. In this interstellar conflict scenario, you're the skipper of a Terran starship facing alien vessels which split into two when hit for the first time. Only when they're divided can they be wiped out. So all that lies between the solar system and certain destruction is you and your joystick. The winner will be the one who notches up the biggest score in one minute from now. So here's Jane Finlayson, shooting rapidly, firing almost indiscriminately, and one life goes. I can hear Mr. Scott down in the engine room. Captain, the dilithium crystals are running out. The freezers won't take any more. They're overheating and the haggis has burnt to a crisp. Here's Roy. He has the chiseled looks of Captain Kirk. How is he succeeding? He looks confident, smiling. This just won't do. He's got to look more gritty than that. I used to have an ambush, but it died. I'm afraid I didn't water it. Meanwhile, Jane, proving that women are just as good as men at these games. Now, we're running out of time. Zap as many as you can in the last few seconds. These aliens keep on coming. They're ruthless. 
I'm about to blow the whistle, so... And that's time up. And I think the winner is Jane Fiddlerson. Now, Chip In Challenge is all about families coming into our studio to play computer games in the best possible spirit. It doesn't matter whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. Now, we have these fabulous trophies here for which no expense has been spared at all, I assure you. And irrespective of who won or lost, I'm going to give you both one. To Piers, on behalf of the Finlayson family, Thank you very much. and to Andrew, on behalf of the Fowlers. Thank you. And well done. Well, that's all from Chipping for today. See you next week at the slightly earlier time of 6.35.